Disappointment hangs heavy in the air as far as today's readings are concerned. In the first reading, Isaiah speaks of a vineyard owner's utter devotion and dedication to his vineyard, only to get wild grapes at the end. Disillusionment leads to a justified complaint. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? This appointment also attacks very dedicated people like Paul, who, drawing on his own personal experiences of floggings, shipwrecks, and even of imprisonment, resorts to encouraging the Philippians, exhorting them to banish anxiety from their minds. Instead, Paul them tells them to seek for the higher things, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. This appointment turns to anger in the Gospel parable. Anger paves the way to rejection, and rejection comes out as downright apparent punishment to the irresponsible, homicidal, and greedy tenants. The kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. This is one of those Sundays when the readings resonate fully with my existential interior state. As of this writing, I confess to my readers that I am a little depressed. I too am a little angry without having to justify nor explain the reasons for my disappointment and anger, I just feel I ought to share with you that merely knowing that the Lord seems to be no stranger to disappointment and anger, as today's reading seem to tell us, is already good news enough for me, who am struggling like the Philippians of old, with problems that border on or are related to the anxiety that St. Paul was writing about. One feels justified to complain to the Lord, as did the psalmist, Quare via impiorum prosperatur? Why do evil ways men's, evil men's ways prosper? And as my oft-quoted and favorite poet puts it, what, why does all I endeavor in disappointment end? One feels not only justified, one is outraged on account of so many things, of too much politics in this country that is fast being dragged to oblivion by honorable politicians who are really out to safeguard their own selfish interests. Endless debates and pointless investigations that lead nowhere. Of rampant corruption that is the single biggest obstacle to national progress. Of so much inequality in this country that has long prided itself as the only Christian nation in the Far East. The list is legion. The vineyard is not only full of wild grapes. The tenants that man the store, both the leaders and the lead, are not far from the gospel parables, criminal tenants who see not the common good, but their own personal and selfish good, pretending to take the high moral ground of personal integrity. They decry and condemn the dishonesty of the one in power but all the while silent and mum about their own complicity toward the destruction of the common good and the trampling down of little people's dreams about a better country, a better future, and a more prosperous tomorrow. I am not just disappointed. I am angry at so much pharisaical posturing of politicians, both those in or out of office who to so many people's minds are nothing but wolves in sheep's clothing. There is enough reason for anyone to up the ante of anxiety. All one needs to do is to see the dire prognostications if our country and people go on in the same strain. All one needs to see is the steady deterioration of the country's infrastructures, the breakdown of leadership at all levels, the steady loss of professionalism at every turn, the sorry state that education has for decades been mired in, and the growing number of those of us who would rather be out than in, 
along with the concomitant loss of national self-esteem that all this produces. Under the sway of such disappointment and anger, it is all too easy to succumb to discouragement. Has the Lord God given up on us as bad job? Are we to understand that God gave up on His people at some point and exchanged them for a new breed of more willing tenants who would be more dedicated to the cause of His vineyard? Has God's patience worn thin? And are we now to wallow in self-pity and drown in the rampaging waves of national anxiety? There is nothing in the readings, though, that speak about giving up, being given up, or being rejected by God. As a parable, it drives home a message, not necessarily a literal turn of events that should be understood to the letter. Neither ought anyone to read in the Gospel an indictment against the Jews who rejected Christ and His teachings. It would be good for us to be reminded that Jesus was talking to the leaders of the people in His times who were rejecting Him. He is now talking to you and me. Even as He talks now to the leaders who are in the forefront, who are more capable of making or breaking this nation and people, He is talking to each and every one of us right here, right now. And what He is saying, like always, ought to be good news. Good news to a people just about ready to give up on ourselves, just about ready to give up on our brightest dreams and fondest hopes both for ourselves, our families, our future, and our people. I would like to suggest that instead of dousing cold water on our dreams, the Lord is really telling us today to hold on to them, to remember that before it was ever ours, it was originally God's dream, God's vision, and that the cornerstone on which His dream is built will never be rejected, will never be toppled, will never be given up by Him who dreamt far more than any one of us ever did or ever could. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. No, we are not called to disappointment, anger, disillusionment, and anxiety. We are called to go far above and beyond all this. Whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, gracious, excellent, anything worthy of praise, think about these things, as St. Paul counsels us. And as we pray in today's alternative opening prayer, we ask God and we ask Him now, lead us to seek beyond our reach and give us the courage to stand before your truth. One such truth stands out clearly today, the truth of God's lofty dream and vision for you and me, for us all. Amen. And this, my dear friends, is your Kalakbay at Katoto in today's episode of Puso sa Puso saying thank you and God bless you.